Hey everyone, this is Rick Morgan. I wanted to talk a little bit about an experiment I've been doing with uh, lights. I'm going to fully explore 435 versus 455 nanometers of photo bleaching lights for comic books. I've previously done some of these experiments and found the 435 to be uh, more whitening in a short amount of time, so I'm going to call that faster, but I'm quickly realizing that I need to do a more thorough set of experience, and this is just some of my sort of down selection and exploration uh, initial experiments. What I, what I tend to do is compare several frequencies of light. The factors, if you think about factors, levels, and responses in designing an experiment, the factors will be uh, frequency of light, distance of light from the comic book, uh, duration of light exposure, and the wattage or power of the lights. Uh, the also c in combination with the amount and concentration of peroxide and the duration of total exposure of the book to all of these variables. The uh, responses will be <coughs> the amount of whitening. The measure it will measure how white the uh, paper gets from standard, and that's one of the big problems is getting a standard uh, color of old comic book paper. I need. I really don't have enough left. I've of yellowed comic books. If anybody knows where I can get some old ones, let me know what I can cut up and use for testing because I need a lot to do this experiment. And um, the other one is how brittle the paper gets. The, the, the gist of it is I did this experiment, which is I cut some, I laser cut some hexagons with two frequencies of light over five hours of time. Just This is just qualitative initial, and I'm measuring, I'm qualitatively looking at how white these um, spots got versus the yellowing at one to five hours and then I measure just qualitatively with my fingers to see how brittle the paper is. This is the one hour part, this is the five hour part and definitely the one hour is much more flexible than the five hour. You can really feel it. I'll try to rehydrate this in paper and see if that makes a difference later. But anyway this is just an initial exploration experiment I thought you might enjoy. So um, hey, take care. Bye-bye. This is our book, Space Adventures. I'll show you what the front and back look like for a reference. This is the inside cover that we're actually using. I'm going to cut this in half and cut strips out of it so that we can use them in our light test. They're about the same color. This is a nice little test strip. There will be five hexagons that are masked by a block of paper you see here that I laser cut. So I'm going to line that up. It doesn't quite fit nicely here, so I'll turn them vertically. Here's 435 and 455 nanometer lights. They're blocked off, they're shielded from each other on the inside. You can see that they're sort of taped together on the back. And this is what, oh, sorry, then we apply 3% peroxide. I'm trying to use a milder uh, peroxide, just a little bit. I didn't measure this specifically, but I gave them about the same amount. And this is what the test looked like with each light. I made this a clear box so I could see inside. And there's the purple and the blue lights. And then we will see what happens. Here they are in test. We, after the first hour, we cover up. You can see we've, we cover up the first hour section with paper. And then we continue testing. Here in each hour, we cover up another section. So at the end, the first four sections are covered and the last one's not covered. So we have five individual hours, each cumulative, so the first one's one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hours of cumulative exposure. Here we are, we'll take these off, and this is the 435 section. See what it looks like. Looks like this. There's five spots. Then we do the same thing with the 455 piece. And there are five spots too. It looks pretty dramatic. This one, the, the 435 leaked peroxide around the edges and the, the 455 didn't. So the edges weren't quite as defined in one of them. Here they are. You can see what they look like at one, two, three, four, and five hours. At one hour, the I would say that the 435 looks slightly better, not a lot. At two hours, I would say they're maybe slightly better. This is very slight in the two hour mark. At three hours, I think the 455 looked better, a little bit, of course. 
at the four hour mark, it's harder to tell because there was tape and I didn't recognize that there was tape in the middle of that book. So I call it a draw. I don't really know it's not measurable. Five hours, 435 may be better, but it also spread out more so the edges aren't defined because the peroxide made a mess on that one because it wasn't as tight to the mask. Overall, I'd say that the first hour and second hour, I'd give a slight edge to the 435. The third hour, I would definitely say the 455 looked better. It was a tie in the last two as far as I'm concerned. So what's my summary? I don't think it really makes a difference. I'm not sure that one frequency or the other made really had any kind of advantage over the other in terms of whitening power. So we'll call that about the same or a draw and for this particular book with these lights in this experiment. As far as embrittlement goes, they were all progressively more brittle as we went from one to five hours. The one hour was slightly stiffer than the rest of the paper. The five hours was definitely stiffer than the rest of the paper. And they were about the same top and bottom. It did not make a difference in this qualitative analysis. I couldn't tell one from the other. I'll have to get a paper a punch and do a strength test on it, but uh, not one big difference from one to the other at all, and about the same from one to the other. I have one light to the other, so I would say overall there's really no difference I can tell in the 435 versus 455 in this experiment with this book. I will do more experiments and see if I can reveal anything there. Like I was saying, one future experiment might be to rehydrate these. Like I'm going to take a bigger pieces of paper, expose them to more light, let's say a couple hours, a common amount of time, and then see if rehydrating brings it back. If it's true that that does bring it back, not so rigid, or if it remains stiff over time. And I'll also do uh, different uh, concentrations of peroxide, and I'll add a couple frequencies of light. I can do 395, and I can do 500, uh, just to get a better uh, sample set. If any of you have any other ideas of experiments you'd like to see or any, you want to share anything you've done yourself, uh, similarly, we can um, we can try. It's good to have a control each time, and it's good to have a quantitative. I'll probably try to switch this to quantitative. I can measure the color of the paper, so we should do that uh, quantitatively. And um, yeah, anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye-bye.